Welcome to another episode of Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and friends. Here's your host, Russ McClellan. Hey, good Saturday morning to you. Thanks for tuning in to Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan. That's me and friends. And I have a very cool, very special guest. We've had him on the show once before, Satima Nali. How you doing, my friend? Russ, it's great to be here. I'm so excited, and I'm doing fantastic today. You know what, Satima, you've had an interesting career, and I don't want to rehash everything, but you know what I love about your story? And if anybody went through that lovely uh, time in the world called the Great Recession, uh, they better have some perseverance and uh, some commitment and desire and persistence built into them because it was a, a real radical adjustment I know I was uh, thinking I was all that in a bag of chips for a minute in my uh, my local hometown in Chelan County in the middle of Washington State, but you were a little bit different than me. You were kind of on that world stage, and maybe you could just kind of refresh uh, for people that don't know you, kind of what your history is and what you do, and then we can kind of dive into what I kind of would like to talk about in, in this land of COVID. Yeah, you got it. So uh, college ball, are well, you... Picked up by the Patriots, won a Super Bowl championship there with the Pats in 0102. Short career, NFL not for long. So I come home with the Super Bowl ring, got a college degree, and I'm lost and confused. What do I do now? Like a lot of people, right? They hit a point where you're like, okay, I got to move on to the next chapter. What do I do? Jumped into the mortgage industry, had a friend of mine doing mortgages. So jumped into that uh, arena, 2004, 5, 6, 7, 8, when times were easy to make money. You could print money, real estate, mortgage, hard money, development. And we had properties all over the country. We had big teams. Money was amazing. And then it wasn't. 0708 happened. And we got crushed. We got obliterated. And financial Armageddon took place where we lost all our cars to repossession. Every property we owned to foreclosure. I just, I was so shocked, right? So shell-shocked. Got to the point where we were kicked out of our home, living in a, in a tiny 900 square. So we go from like you know, 6,000, 8,000 square foot homes to 900 square foot town home, renting, laid on rent. And I take my Super Bowl ring, which was the most valuable thing I had at the time. That, again, not a human life. And I sell that to get money to pay my bills and to try to keep us afloat. And then filed a bankruptcy 10 years ago, 2010, filed a bankruptcy was, you know, I drew the line in the sand, uh, very depressed, very overweight, very discouraged, very lost, right? Some would call it a crisis of faith. Some just, right, I, I just hit the bottom like a lot of people. And 10 years later, I live about uh, 15 minutes from the beach down here in Southern California. I love the neighborhood we live in. I'm living my dream. I coach people for a living. I speak on stages for a living. I help people who are highly committed to get the results that they truly want to get. It could be the financial realm, could be the physical fitness realm, could be their relationships and their marriage. Bottom line is today I get to live my dream 10 years out of bankruptcy. And again, it didn't take me 10 years to get here, but over the last 10 years, it has taken me time to grow and become that person who knows how to deal with adversity Happily married to my best friend, best friend, love of my life. We got three beautiful boys. I coach football, coach basketball, run a podcast, have some books. And man, I love life, man. And, and, and it is my mission. If someone said, hey, September, what's your mission? I simply say it is to help people unleash their human potential to maximize their performance so they can produce results that matter. Yeah, I mean, it's an amazing story. You know, like you, I had a, a pretty good time. I didn't win a Super Bowl. I wasn't quite nearly as, uh, you know, fast as I thought I was. <laughs> they didn't think I was. But I had a great time playing all the sports, and I ended up doing a real estate career very similar. Uh, had more money than I thought possible, at least from my hometown. And then about 10 years in October, bam, filed, right? Lost it all. Yeah. Ended up sleeping on my couch in my office because I couldn't have a house and an office for a couple years. It was a wild time, a wild time. But, you know, like you said, I think one of the major things that I've learned about that is that I learned lessons I never would have learned. I, I learned lessons about myself, about my faith, about my family, about my, you know, and most importantly, my kids. My kids were uh, 15 and 10 when this all went down. So it was an interesting transition for them as now they're, my daughter's a doctor of audiology at 28. My son is uh, a Marine, 
he'll be actually discharged in, uh, in December. So, I mean, some very valuable lessons. But w- what I'm curious about, Satema, is as, we've, as you and I, different, different but the same, very different people, very much the same in, in the way we look at things. I've read a lot of your stuff. I appreciate your podcasts. I think you're, I'm, you know, I'm excited one day to, to get that on the calendar. Um, your coaching and, and the things that you're doing for people at such a high level it should be, you know, really... I really commend you for that. And then now here we are, we're sitting in this crazy time. And and I don't know about you, but I've not quite seen so many people getting so upset at everything there is, including getting down on themselves and really living their life through limiting beliefs. And I'm curious, like, why do you think, if you do, why do you think that so many people in today's world are victimizing themselves or they feel like they're a victim and also the blame game you know it's always somebody else's fault and they're very down on themselves and you know we run a team of about 60 agents and climbing and real estate now and things are we're doing a lot of fun things but you know limiting beliefs are right there on top of it with almost everyone it seems what can you add to people that are listening to this that really really feel like they're they're a victim and they're not lying to themselves in their own mind yeah they are so you know i i would just say listen I love a man named jesus who said by their fruits ye shall know them and i am really really big on results or the fruits of one's life so if someone's like like they hear the the, the podcast or the, the call or they read a blog post or see a video and if you ever hear like us talking about this victim mentality, it's easy to say, well, that's not me. But you can tell a victim, again, a person has the victim mentality, right, where it's their mom's fault, their dad's fault, the neighborhood they grew up in's fault. Uh, it is the color of their skin's fault. It's the government's fault. It's the economy's fault. It's, the, you know, the neighbor down the street's fault. But whoever's fault, always blame you. The easiest thing is to say, look at your life. Do you love your life. And I'll tell you right now, most victims don't love that people with victim mentality. They don't love their life, right? They're not producing. They're not out doing the required work. They're blaming, they're complaining, they're making excuses. Now, why would someone choose to say that? Well, number one, I'll tell you three, three reasons. Number one, there's this thing called, we, we call a, a perceptual functional constraint, right? It's a blind spot. Like they're, they cannot see it. You know, it's like you, you just can't see it. So you you got this victim language. You have this victim mentality. And you cannot even see it. So you're blind to it. This is why coaching and listening to other people and having someone work in your life with you to help you. And like really the phrase I say is to punch you in the face. Again, most people who are walking around living life, they think they're actually living at their maximum potential. They think they're actually right? Really living at a high level. And I'm like, you're not. We live in the United States of America, the greatest country on the planet where a person could come from a third world country, not speak English, and within a handful of years or a decade, create a business that is producing six, seven, eight, or nine figures, living a life of freedom, a life of luxury, a life of service and contribution. So I can tell you right now, people who live that life, rarely will you find them with a mindset that is rooted in scarcity where there's just not enough. And typically that's what it is. So you got this blind spot, perceptual function, they're blind. They can't even see that they're a victim. But but again, that's why you have coaches and people to help them see. Number two, you go and look at their results and you can tell if they're doing what I call core action or surface confusion. Service confusion is just like sawing sawdust. It is sharpening pencils. It is organizing your office. It is looking up the best massage guns and supplements and shoes. Like if you want to lose weight, people who are in this victim mentality, they, it's not their fault. It's their genes and genetics. And they'll actually, they'll actually convince themselves. They'll actually go look at massage guns and the, the right supplements and how much uh, fish oils they should take. And they'll, they'll, they'll study macros. And the, the, the research of uh, gyms to go to and yoga mats and apps, they'll never, ever walk into a gym, pick up a damn weight and lift. Or they'll never hit the trail and get their heart accelerating. 
That's called surface confusion. People with the victim mentality, they've convinced themselves that they're actually doing the work. While people, what I call core action or necessary required action, NRAs, they're, they're not victim, victim of why, because they're doing what's necessary and required. And how do you know they're doing that? They produce the fruit, the results. So in the business world, they're producing money. They're producing clients. They're producing sales. They're producing this exchange where money's coming in because they're producing value. In the fitness world, they're producing like fat dropping off their body, a, a six pack, a, a 5K, 10K marathon. They're increasing their verticals, right? They're, they're uh, their verts or their broad jumps, like you can see, they their body composition is changing. In a family, the results are they're happier, they're more connected, they're more present. A, a man will date his wife every week, non-negotiable. He will be present with his children. He'll like they'll have morning routines to build faith and chemistry in a home and culture. They'll have evening routines in my home. Again, we've got scripture, we got prayer. At night, we do highs and lows. We always share our highs of the day's lows gratitude, kneel together as a family, pray. We read scriptures in the morning. We pray before, like there's this culture in our home because I know what I want, which leads me to the third piece. People with victim mentalities, if you were to ask them, hey, what do you really want? They, they can't tell you. They can tell you what they don't want and they can tell you why life sucks. But people who are not in that mindset, so right, the easy way to distinguish this is people with the victim mentality, they're, they're simply living in scarcity. There's not enough. Fear and doubt drive the game because there's not enough. They look at but they look at life like, oh my gosh, if they win, I lose. People with this uh, the abundant mentality, right? This comes from Stephen Covey, some habits. But that abundant mentality, they're rarely in scarcity, therefore rarely with the victim mentality, because they know I am one hundred percent responsible for my life. So I get to choose where I live, the schools my children go to, how I show up at work, the car I drive, the vacations I take, the contributions I make, I get to choose how my body looks and feels and performs. I get to choose. I am at choice. I am not a victim. I am 100% responsible. Now I can hear someone say, well, so tell me, what about people who get cancer? That's great. Congratulations. That's called life. Or someone gets COVID, they didn't choose that. Well, they get to choose how they respond to whatever's happening to them, right? Victims react, but people who are powerful or these agents who really use their choice or their agency or their liberties, they just know, look, I'm not going to react like I, I have no power. I get to have the power to choose. So th those are, for me, the three things that can really help some distinguish do I love my life? Am I producing results? Am I doing the necessary required actions every day? Or am I glued to my phone, scrolling social media, wasting time, kind of getting by being average and mediocre? Yeah. Hey, man, when we come back, that's amazing stuff. The difference between abundant mindset, scarcity mindset, it's a, it's in every one of us. We have to fight to get what we want. We can't just lay back and, and relax and uh, take it as it comes. So when we come back, so Tim, we're going to take a, a short break. I want to dive into what some of the things that people can do once they realize that they have the control that they didn't think they had. I appreciate you being on the air, calling in, as always, very generous with your time. And you're always about helping other people. So I, I admire that very much. We'll be back in just a few minutes with Home Sweet Home and Russell McClellan and Pray. Home Sweet Home. Thanks, Kayla Williams. I love my dream home. Hi, this is Russ McClellan, operating partner and designated broker of Keller Williams Realty, North Central Washington. Hey, thanks for tuning into our show each and every Saturday morning. I wanted to share the fact that we've been in business now about a year and a half. We have over 50 real estate agents, and there's a reason for that. Mainly, it's relationship and culture. You know, sometimes people definitely look at the money and the commissions and the splits. But at the end of the day, it's about relationships, trust, that familial connection that you have at Keller Williams. That's what we strive to do, and that's how we look at our clients. We now have offices in Brewster, Chelan, and Wenatchee. We have agents in Wenatchee, and East Wenatchee, and Kashmir, and Leavenworth, Chelan, Brewster. Really having a good time. So if you're interested in learning about why is Keller Williams Realty growing as fast as we've grown and have as many agents that are focused on their clients as we do, give us a call at 509-888-0038. 
or just stop by and see us at 1111 North Mission Street right here in Wenatchee. Hi, this is Russ McClellan, operating partner of Keller Williams. I want to thank you for supporting my radio show as we enter our third year of broadcasting. We are going to continue to provide an emphasis this year on real estate education by inviting our affiliate partners to share their knowledge and expertise, as well as discuss current real estate trends and topics with all of us. I'm also excited to introduce our Keller Williams brokers individually so you can get to know them as I do. Sincerely, thank you for supporting Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and friends. Call us anytime at 509-888-0038 or stop by our office at 1111 North Mission Street. You're listening to Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and friends. And here's Russ. Hey, welcome back to Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan on this Saturday morning. Really appreciate your time tuning in to our radio show. Just so you know, guys, this month we're going to be broadcasting on all the stuff like iTunes, uh, Spotify, YouTube. Maybe we're a legit company. Weird. A couple years in. Just locking and loading on a daily basis. And we're talking with Satim Manali. You can get to Satima's information if you're interested in getting coached by one of the best coaches on the planet. Satim Manali, S E T E M A G A L I. Is that right, Satima? Yep, that's hey, that's it. Yeah, I started. See, I had a limiting belief right there. I was second guessing myself. Dot uh, com. So, <laughs> so look him, look him up. You know, and you're talking about developing habits or crushing bad habits. When someone is, if they're listening to this and they, they're starting to think and they're, you know, I think the first thing is right to be honest with yourself and don't, you know, don't look in the mirror and just lie to yourself because it's a, it's a game you're going to lose. Um, you can lie to a lot of people and maybe get away with it if you've got that silver tongue. But at the end of the day, it's very difficult to, to look upstairs and lie or look in the mirror and lie because you kind of know yourself when you are BSing yourself. But to your point, some people don't know what they don't know because they've developed these habits that have these massive blind spots. And I think those blind spots, from my experience, are reinforced in many cases by the people that love them. You know, they're saying, well, you shouldn't do that. That's too risky. It's okay. You're big boned. You know, it's fine. You know, we've always been blue collar. You know, whatever crazy line that they want to want to listen to to get themselves through the day while they're eating bonbons and watching the old tiger king i don't know if that's a thing anymore but what would you do to what would you say to somebody so tim if you were coaching them and they started having a little bit of an awakening and they were like okay i'm gonna call you and now i'm gonna start telling you all my reasons how do you break somebody of that and get them launched into a different direction as a coach yeah i like the, 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 one of the greatest questions greatest questions you can ask is, well, listen, what is your current reality today? And I just take them through, like, what's the current reality? And they, they might say, well, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah, well, let's just go through the big four, physical, spiritual, relational, financial. What's current reality? How much do you weigh? How do your clothes fit? How's your energy level? How often do you work out? How's your endurance and stamina? Do you like seeing yourself? Are you proud to go see people you haven't seen in 5, 10, 20 years? Okay. Uh, spiritually, what's your current reality? And what's your baseline? What are your spiritual disciplines? Whether they're spiritual, religious, totally up to the person. Are you grounded? Do you feel peace? Do you have gratitude and happiness? Do you feel connected to God, to your faith, to higher purpose? Or are you just going through the motions? What's your current reality with your relationships, your marriage, right? How often do you have sex? Is your intimacy great? Is it awesome and connected? Are you close with your children? Do you vacation regularly with your spouse, just you and your spouse? Do you take your family on vacations? Do you invest time? Do you read with your children? Do you whatever, like what is the current reality? And then, of course, money. Do you have a six to 12 months rainy day fund? Do you have money coming in from more, multiple sources? Do you budget? Do you have marketing and sales down? Like are you, if something happens to you tomorrow, can your family sustain? If COVID happens again, can, how long can you go without having to freak out? Or are you one or two paychecks away? Do you love your job? Do you love the work you're involved with? That's, I start there and I say, look, what you can't, let's just be real. And principle one in the 13 principles is the truth will set you free. So I tell people, look, don't lie. Like, don't lie. Don't, don't lie to me. Don't make it. Like, tell it how it really is. Not better than it is. Not worse than it is. Just what's reality? And then from there, I would just ask a person, okay, now let, let's just be really honest here. What do you want for your life? 
And again, there's so many questions you can ask, right? What's the kind of money you want to bring? How do you want to travel? What kind of contributions do you want to make? How do you want to look and feel every single day? How do you want to feel 10 years from now? What will you be doing five years from now? Is there a project you want to do? Is there a passion project, a book, a podcast? Is there a place you want to visit? You know, how, how do you feel about your marriage right now? Are you deeply in love? How do you want that relationship with your children to be? Again, I've got a 13, a 10, and an 8-year-old. I'm clear, so crystal clear, about what I want with my family, with the relationship with my sons, with my business, with my life, with my legacy. And principle four is clarity is power. So when I start to coach someone, we get really clear about where they are. And then we get really clear, like, truth, brutal truths, transparency and honesty about what they want. And then now that we've distinguished right where they are and where they want to go, we can go do work. And then, if, look, if they've got reasons and excuses, look, I just don't tolerate that in the conversation. I'm just like, look, if you want to sit here and tell me well, all the reasons, look, I'll go get a, go hire a therapist or a, or a psychiatrist, go, go, go find misery, because misery loves company, but so does greatness and excellence. And people who have big dreams, right? It's called the big, hairy, audacious goal. Big goals, dreams. They typically aren't going to spend their energy wasted on why they can't. They're focused on, like, how can I make this happen? How can I go build a life that I love? Whether it's a job or a project or a location to live in or doing a work that you feel strongly called to. And so that's where I would go. It's like, where are you? What do you want? Now, let me, like, real I, coaching. Yeah, go go can, ahead. Can I ask you something? Yeah. When you're when, when when someone calls you up and they have the best of intentions and you break them down, I mean, many of us need to be broke down before we can build ourselves back up. And and, and being self confident enough to even make that call to you, knowing you're not gonna take the BS of the excuses and the limiting beliefs and the scarcity mindset. When you tear somebody down, do you typically see any, I don't know, consistency in behavior as people go through certain phases? Because I, I can imagine there's a lot of people right now that have been furloughed, that have maybe lost their business or about to. They're not, they're kind of unsure about what to do. And they're, they're blaming one side of the political aisle or the other side of the political aisle or whatever excuse they have. But when you see somebody trying... And, you know, let's, let's use uh, coaching, for example. I coach my kids when they're little in uh, football and basketball and all that as well. It was one of the greatest times of my life, by the way. Um, and I listened to one of your podcasts, and you talked about something that I, I really want to touch on, and that is what do you do to those people that in their heart of hearts you can see that they want to, but they just don't know how? And they're, well, and they're hurt. When you start hammering on them, they get hurt. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of work in coaching. Right? I don't just come drop a hammer on someone. Mm -hmm. It's like you, there's a lot of preparation. There's a lot of preparatory work, right? A lot of like just really getting someone ready. And look, when people work with me, the, the, the main prerequisite is you got to be committed. Highly committed means highly committed. Highly committed doesn't mean which. Highly committed doesn't mean excited. Highly committed means they're going to do whatever is necessary and required. They will alter their behaviors to match and be consistent with the results they want. So, look, coaching is a beautiful process. And everyone that I coach right now, I've got business owners, entrepreneurs. i got guys producing nine figures in their organizations and in their revenues. I've got people who are just starting out. I have people who, again, every type of industry across the board and – yeah, I'm not paid to be their friend, and I'm not paid to be their buddy. So the, that's the last thing that's going to happen is they're going to like me. No, they, they will probably not like me for quite some time, but they will absolutely love what happens to their sight because I help people to see clearly the truth. That's coaching is getting people – to see what they cannot see or fathom, getting people to feel something that they have not felt or never felt before, getting people to just see what's possible. Once people see 
the, the real possibility, once people really see, like, again, someone with limited belief, oh, there's no way that's possible. And my clients, I'm going to say, hey, let me ask you a question. What's possible? There's one word every time. Everything. Everything and anything is possible. I don't care if it has to do with more money, more time, greater health, greater fitness, greater connection to, to your children or to God or faith. Like better habits. I mean, people that I work with, they're just happier. They're producing greater results. And results, again, money, fitness, health, spirituality, connection, like, no, everything. And that's how it's done, my friend. Like, it's just, it's this beautiful process, beautiful process. Right on, man. When we come back, we're going to be going into our third segment. I'm talking with Satim Anali. You can get a, a hold of Satim and go to his website. S E T E M A G A L I dot com. Satima G A L I dot com. One of the best coaches, Super Bowl champion, been up, been down. Most importantly, he's full of fire and he's going to help change your life. Um, appreciate it, Satima. We'll be right back on the Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan show and Satima Nolly in just a few minutes. Home Sweet Home. Thanks, Keller Williams. I love my dream home. Hi, this is Russ McClellan, operating partner with Keller Williams Realty and the host of this show, Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and Friends. I want to take just a minute to say a heartfelt thank you for your support and tuning into our show each and every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. I'm very proud to share that we are celebrating our 50th radio show this month and launching into our third consecutive year of this show, all thanks to you. I also want to thank all the amazing people that were kind enough to come on the show and share their stories, thoughts, fears, wisdom, and experiences with all of us over the last two years, including my co-hosts and friends, Sharon Crockett and Michael Maher with Prime Lending. I personally have made some amazing friendships as a direct result of this radio show, and I couldn't be more grateful. As always, throw the phone in the drawer, be present, spend some time with your friends and loved ones, and make it a fantastic Saturday. Thanks again for your amazing support of Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and friends. Hi, this is Russ McClellan, operating partner and designated broker of Keller Williams Realty, North Central Washington. Hey, thanks for tuning into our show each and every Saturday morning. I wanted to share the fact that we've been in business now about a year and a half. We have over 50 real estate agents, and there's a reason for that. Mainly, it's relationship and culture. You know, sometimes people definitely look at the money and the commissions and the splits. But at the end of the day, it's about relationships, trust, that familial connection that you have at Keller Williams. That's what we strive to do, and that's how we look at our clients. We now have offices in Brewster, Chelan, and Wenatchee. We have agents in Wenatchee and East Wenatchee and Kashmir and Leavenworth, Chelan, Brewster. Really having a good time. So if you're interested in learning about why is Keller Williams Realty growing as fast as we've grown and have as many agents that are focused on their clients as we do, Give us a call at 509-888-0038 or just stop by and see us at 1111 North Mission Street right here in Wenatchee. You're tuned to Russ McClellan and Friends on the Real Estate Show Home Sweet Home. Let's get back to Russ. Hey, welcome back to Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and Satim and Nolly. We're having a great conversation about mindset, about where do you want to be? Where are you now? Get real with yourself. Are you seriously happy or are you kind of frustrated? What, what's it going to be? Because guess what, my friends, it could get worse before it gets better. For all of you that have been furloughed without your permission, I might add, it's one of the things I love about real estate and being self-employed is I, you know, I can fire myself every once in a while because I want to go swimming in the lake or go spend some time with my kids, but I typically hire myself back and I do it with my permission. I know a lot of good people out there that are getting hammered in this COVID virus land without their permission. Now, the question be, is going to beg itself, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to cry? Are you going to quit? Are you going to fight? Are you going to fight for your family? Are you going to fight for yourself, more importantly? And so, Stemma, you know, I'm curious. What would you do for people that are afraid to be vulnerable? They have a lot of talent. They have a lot of skill sets. But their biggest challenge is self-esteem. And you know what I find is most of the time it's their friends and family that are the ones bringing them down saying, you know, oh, no, don't go sell real estate. That's commission based. You need that $14, $15 an hour job. That's the key because it's predictable. And so they listen and then they don't ever blossom. So what do we do to get people that deep down know they can do it, but they're just scared? I'll just tell you a story. So. 
two stories to, to illustrate this. My sons, when we moved to our home here in Southern California, right, they, the, the oldest, my oldest son was like eight years old. And it was amazing because we got here and he would go upstairs, but he would be afraid to go upstairs. You know, hey, go grab this, go grab a shirt, go grab some socks. And he would take the, his younger brother, who was three at the time. Hey, can you come with me upstairs? I'm like, what's he going to do for you? And he was afraid. And so instead of just saying, there's no, there's no clown or boogeyman, I would just logically say, what are you afraid of? You can tell daddy. And he's like, the clown, right? The clown from It, right? I think it's what, Pennywise. I don't know the name of the clown. I haven't seen the movie, but the big old clown. I'm like, okay, why are you afraid of it? Cause I feel like it's in my closet. Okay, all right. Let's let's go. Let's go see if it's up there. And of course, I'd pretend like it was in there and freak them out. And and then as they got older, they were still afraid. Like they were still afraid. And I'm like, hey, what are you afraid of? And you know, it's like adults. I'm like, we're, my, our kids are afraid of a boogeyman under the bed or in the closet or in the dark. And if you just ask questions long enough, they can figure it out for themselves. No, it's not real. There's no one there. But when I believe there's a boogeyman there, I'm afraid and I feel afraid. And when I'm afraid because of a story that I'm making up about a boogeyman in the closet, uh, I don't take action. I don't go into the room. Well, it's the same thing with real estate agents or mortgage professionals or anyone who's got to take that leap of faith. It's like they think some boogeyman is going to hunt them down and wipe them out if they I take this leap of faith. So the story number two, uh, and we had immersion this year, Titan immersion. And one of the guys who showed up to Titan immersion had just started being a real estate agent. He was a firefighter, right? He lives in the Midwest. Firefighter turned real estate agent, went all in, left the, the good paying job. And then he emptied his account, borrowed money and left his a brand new credit card to come to immersion. And was in tears and saying, he said, hey, I need this because I need to accelerate my my results with real estate or else I'm, I got to go back to being, you know, getting a job. He was all in. He was afraid. Everyone told him he was crazy. And we are now six months later. Dude's averaging three to four deals a month. Is already flipping homes. He's partnered with people who have got money to do that whole real estate investing side. Loving life. I mean, just body is more, he's more jacked and ripped than he was when he started. Happy as can be. And it's like, what's the difference? You see, fear will always exist while we are human beings. Always. You'll never get rid of it. The only difference is powerful people who produce results, they act regardless of the fear. It's interesting. A good buddy of mine, Fletcher Ellingson, is another. Uh business coach, life coach, he says something along that lines, you can't have courage without fear. Courage is a good thing, right? But it doesn't exist without fear. Because if, uh, you know... Yeah, fear is always always going to exist, always. So for someone who's afraid, look, I could tell you, go go do it, but just just take a real powerful approach. Just question why you're afraid. You're afraid because of what, what you might look like, what people might say about you, what, what you think they might say about you. What if you suck? A lot of people just don't want to be seen starting in the beginning. Or a lot of people don't want to be seen starting small. But everyone starts crawling before they sit up and walk and then before they jog and run and sprint. So to anyone who's just got talent and you're afraid, it's like, look, you're going to either worship fear and let fear be your God or you can let God be your God, which he says, right? I've not given you this, the, the spirit of fear, but a power and of love and a sound mind. And look, there's, every time you're afraid, just ask, what am I really afraid of? And if you'll just dig hard enough on that question, what am I really afraid of? You're going to figure out it's no different than your child being afraid of a clown or the boogeyman in the closet. It's interesting, isn't it, how... When you're young, I think I heard this on Rogan or something on a podcast, where when you're young and full of youthful exuberance and don't really know anything, you have all the courage in the world. You're just, nothing can get you down, you know, 
go for it mentality. And then as you get older and a little wiser and a little more mature and you're out of your 20s into your 30s, maybe 40s into 50s, maybe life has taught you some stuff. You're probably a heck of a lot smarter than you were when you had absolute zero fear coming out of high school when you maybe were a big fish, little pond athlete, for example. However, you're now afraid because you're, even though you're twice, three times, 10 times smarter and wiser than you were, but now life is getting to you. It's a fascinating dichotomy that exists as we grow up when it really should be the opposite, right? When you're young, you should be more afraid. And as you know more, you should be more confident and therefore less afraid. But it's kind of funny how the human condition works backwards uh, to me. Yeah. And like I, people like the, the, the last distinction I'll just share to me is if you're really clear about the life you want to live, there's just zero room for fear. Like you've got to go take action in spite of it. And the only way you get better at something is to take the action. Like you learn how to ride a bike by falling down and get back up. You learn how to walk by falling down and getting back up. And that's the same thing with being an entrepreneur, business owner, taking a leap of faith. Like fear to me is the, it's the it kills more people than pretty much anybody. It kills more dreams than anything else. Yeah, no, and this 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 land of the COVID virus, you know, California is a lot like Washington. A lot of craziness going on. A lot of there's going to be a lot of casualties in business in this. You know, it wasn't their fault. It's funny though. There's really two types of people, isn't there? You know, they're going to be just dwelling on that and let it kick its kick your butt, or they're going to maybe pivot and maybe start over. And you, that's the only thing you can do. What would you like, say to somebody that's, that's in, in that position that's got to start over? That the reality, like when I faced 10 years ago, you faced 10 years ago, I looked in the mirror and went, uh-oh. I didn't see this tidal wave as big as it is. I saw a little tidal wave, but this one was big. And it knocked me straight into the cliffs. What would you say to those people right now in the last couple of minutes that we yeah, got I'll, here? I would say to them, there's a gift in every situation if you're willing to find the gift. I, I say this with all humility and sincerity. I'm so grateful for COVID. I'm so grateful for COVID. My business is better. My business is leaner. I am leaner. My people are happier. Like you, you always come out on top when you have this attitude of, I'm going to find the gift in the situation. And if you happen to lose everything, congratulations. No successful person that I know has gone unscathed. They've lost everything. They've wagered everything. They've bet on themselves. They've gotten back up. They've gotten knocked down. And so, again, it comes back to what do you want? Like, if you want to be the person that lost it all in COVID and never recovered, that's on you. But if you want to be a success story and someone who's like, man, I'm doing it, I'm making it happen, that's on you too, 100%. So I would just tell someone who's maybe losing everything, like, it's not the end. You are 100% in charge of your life and what you do with it right now. Yeah, last time I checked, none of us are immortal. So we might as well make the best of what we got, and if we have to pivot, maybe there was a reason we had to pivot. I know personally I can say this with all the humility of the world that, A, I have humility, and B, that I, it led me to help other people in a very different way. And ironically, when I started focusing differently and not looking inward, looking outward to how it affected other people, my actions and my leadership, that's when things started to click. So it, I would yeah. never have maybe had that gift if I hadn't gone bankrupt in, in 10 years ago. So anyway, man, I really, as I've said many times, you're one of the greatest. I'm excited to meet you in person. I met you uh, again. I met you once over with Shane Kidwell on the other side. And uh, you are just gracious. You're a gracious individual. You're an inspiration to many people. I want you to know, guys, if you're thinking about um, even just reading some of his material, go online, get some of Satima Nali's information. You can uh, track him down on his website, S-E-T-E-M-A-G-A-L-I.com. It's, uh, it's very nice. You know, I gave you, I think I texted you yesterday and asked if you'd do this, uh, Satima. You made room for it in your extraordinarily busy schedule. Thanks again, my friend. Thank you so much. All right, take care of yourself. Hey, we'll be right back with Home Sweet Home and Russ McCullough. we got Prime Lending coming up with Michael Maher and seeing what's going on in the world of finance. Home Sweet Home. Thanks, Keller Williams. I love my dream home.
Hi, this is Russ McClellan, designated broker at Keller Williams Realty. If you're thinking of selling your home, why hire us? We have a few simple goals. First, our job is to make you more money in less time by exposing your property to more people than anyone in the business. Second, we will simplify the process. Your Keller Williams expert advisor will identify simple solutions in a real estate world that can sometimes get a tad complex. Third, we will save you time. We will handle the entire process necessary to achieve your real estate goal so you don't have to. We work for you. Finally, we keep you out of trouble. Let's face it, we live in a litigious society and real estate is a big ticket item. Truly knowing how to do the right things in the right order is very important. Hey, call us today and let's talk about how we can achieve these goals for you. 509-888-0038 or simply stop by our office located directly across the street from McDonald's at 1111 North Mission Street. Hi, this is Russ McClellan, operating partner and designated broker of Keller Williams Realty, North Central Washington. Hey, thanks for tuning into our show each and every Saturday morning. I wanted to share the fact that we've been in business now about a year and a half. We have over 50 real estate agents, and there's a reason for that. Mainly, it's relationship and culture. You know, sometimes people definitely look at the money and the commissions and the splits. But at the end of the day, it's about relationships, trust, that familial connection that you have at Keller Williams. That's what we strive to do, and that's how we look at our clients. We now have offices in Brewster, Chelan, and Wenatchee. We have agents in Wenatchee and East Wenatchee and Kashmir and Leavenworth, Chelan, Brewster. Really having a good time. So if you're interested in learning about why is Keller Williams Realty growing as fast as we've grown and have as many agents that are focused on their clients as we do, give us a call at 509-888-0038 or just stop by and see us at 1111 North Mission Street right here in Wenatchee. You're listening to Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and friends. And here's Russ. Hey, man, what a great show with Satima. You know, really, the guy's a high-level coach all around the world. Uh, Based in Southern California, Super Bowl champion, went through some massive adversity in the Great Recession, including had to sell that Super Bowl ring. But you know what? He's back, and his, uh, his faith is strong, and his conviction is stronger I would recommend you go to that website uh, and check it out. Michael with Prime Lending, how are you, sir? Doing well. Glad to be here. Yeah. Hey, you know what I thought we'd do is uh, here's the thing that I find fascinating about people right now in this this world of unpredictability, I guess, to put it uh, lightly. But, you know, a, a year ago, in 2019, rates jumped to about 5%. And they went from like four to five uh, pretty fast. And now we're at about, I don't know, less than three in some cases. My yeah, 2.875 and even even lower. And on 15 years, you can actually get into the low twos. <laughs> the low twos. And when you factor in a primary residence interest deduction, you might be getting that money for darn near free. So here's the question to you, my friend. First of all, in the virus, when it first hit, we, we all thought it was the zombie apocalypse and people are going to be dropping in the streets like that uh, crazy movie with Will Smith. I don't even remember what that was called now. It's a great movie where everybody engineered a virus and everybody died. Pretty morbid. Um, <laughs> but here we are. And now it's not it's bad, but it's not quite as bad as the beginning And then in the beginning, the creditors freaked out. The secondary market uh, seemed to lock down. No land loans, no construction loans, no jumbo loans. Didn't know what was going on. But we're not really there anymore, are we, Michael? Kind of slowly coming back now that um, all the investors, especially with jumbo, really, is what it came down to. I mean, jumbo all but disappeared for three to four months. I mean, there was maybe one investor doing it, and you had to have nearly a perfect file to get any sort of approval on it. But we're starting to see a resurgence in Chase, Redwood, all the different jumbo investors come back with their 30-year products, as well as even some 15-year products, which is kind of, you know, interesting that a lot of people may not realize, but 15-year jumbo loans are actually a little bit of a rarity. Um, 30 years are tip- a little bit more typical and easier to get, but the 15s can require quite a bit more as far as um, qualify- qualifying factors. Right. And, and, you know, they're coming back strong, and now you're back doing construction loans. Is that correct? Yep. Construction loans are back, so those are a minimum of 10% down. And 
they're very easy. All you need to do is find um, the land and the builder, and we can get them approved and, you know, start construction right away. They just deal with our construction department, and um, they get their, the builder gets their draws, and everything works out easily. So those were on hold for a little bit, but they've since come back. Um, yeah, so everything's kind of moving forward as things have kind of dialed down, and people realize that, you know, we're kind of, this is becoming the new norm, at least for you know, wearing masks and social distancing and things are kind of hopefully starting to balance out even more. Yeah. So where do you feel like in the future with respect to interest rates and programs? I know nobody in in 2020 has a crystal ball and depending on who you talk to, especially during during this election year. But what do you feel personally? Where do you think we're going to be? Well, all signs point to when the Fed continues to buy all these mortgage-backed securities, and there's no sign of, of them stopping and they want to keep rates low um, to hopefully maintain some sort of normalcy in, in the economy and keep people wanting to buy and such and keep that incentive going. I think for the rest of this year, 2020, and don't quote me on this, but I sure think and hope that they'll maintain you know, where they're at right now, and whether that just be low threes. Um, high twos, um, and I, I feel like they're not really, they've really steadied. When they first dropped down, um, when all of this pandemic stuff was going on, they actually spiked back up over the course of a week to almost the mid fours, and then they spiked back down to under the three. So they were really volatile, but since um, everything's kind of normalized a little bit more, they've really held true in that low three, high two mark. And now is the time I was just running some payments with some borrowers that I was out looking at homes with and just showing them the difference between a 3% rate and a 4% rate on what that can mean for a payment. It was a difference in him searching in the $400,000 range versus maybe the 350 um, range. So it makes a big difference for sure. Yeah. The other thing that I've been telling people is, hey, I believe personally we're fishing in a stock pond, meaning if the fish are our inventory of houses for sale and the, and the lures are the buyers, we're seeing a heck of a lot of lures coming into our little pond and they're coming from everywhere. I've never seen in my 32 year career, this many people move into North central Washington as, and I've been here a long time. I've seen the big spikes in the 2004, five, six, seven pre-recession days when everybody had a million bucks with a pulse Um, this is bigger than that. And I think it's much more permanent. So the challenge there is this, if, if you have no inventory or you're like, I use that analogy, you're fishing in a stock pond and that pond's not getting replenished. Guess how much each fish is worth, right? Like these homes are going up in value monthly, not annually, monthly. And that's a very scary thing. So what I'm telling the real estate brokers and in, in our team, and we're almost uh, 60 agents and climbing rapidly, um, is that, hey, look and tell people that a good deal might just be paying full price right now because we're seeing we're starting to see bidding wars and and people are scared. But if you wait, I believe you're going to see much higher prices in six months. I mean, I believe every month it's going up. And at some point, if you wait too long and those rates spike, you're going to get double whacked, right? So right now is a unique time to be a seller because prices are incredibly good for you and the market's extremely strong for sellers. But it's also good to be a buyer because of these unbelievable historic rates. Uh, would you would you kind of agree with that or what do you, what's your take on it? No, definitely. I think it would be a lot more challenging if we were seeing this high of an increase and this much demand in this area or all areas really, but this North central Washington in particular and have rates be in the high fours, low fives, like they were in 2019. I think we would be, we would have a whole different buyer group and things may have, you know, we may see an increase in inventory, but it's almost the perfect storm. You have buyers saying, well, I don't know if I want to pay that much But on the flip side, if I wait, I could end up paying, you know, more, not necessarily from the price, but the rate itself. So do I pay a little bit more and get in when you know this particular area is just on fire right now and people are realizing they can work remotely and 
There's just a mass exodus from the west side to come over here for a better quality of life. So it totally makes sense that, you know, if if you've been thinking about it, now is the time to do it. Yeah, with a, without a doubt. And we know that when things get as low as they've ever been in history, the odds are they're probably eventually going to go up. Um, the, the difference yep. between, and the difference I think, Michael, between this market and, you know, back the last boom, which was really driven by artificial wealth. I mean, when they weren't checking your income <laughs> and loaning you a million bucks, yeah, that was artificial and that was, no. that was doomed eventually. This is legit money. Exactly. I mean, you know, this is legit money and people, like you mentioned, people are able to now live in North Central Washington, 300 days of sunshine, clean air, clean water, beautiful lakes and mountains, less crime, less homelessness, less taxation. You know, frankly, would you want to live in downtown Seattle? And before the people making the money they made, they had to live there, right? Now, I'm not hammering too hard right now, but there are people that love the city. Yeah. I, I love to go to the city from time to time. But I can tell you this, if given a choice and I can make the money that I used to have to live in downtown and pay a million dollars for a two-bedroom condo, that I can come to, you know, Wenatchee, Chelan, Leavenworth, you know, wherever you want, Brewster, Omac you name it and get a, for the same price, get a heck of a lot more house. I'm doing it. Um, and that's that whole adoption. Oh, of, yeah. That's adoption of being able to work from home. So, um, I, I just tell everybody, look, you know, don't argue over that 10 or 15 grand because I'm afraid for you. I'm afraid you're going to be the people when you say, well, it's the principle of the thing. I don't pay full price for anything. Well, you, you may find yourself not owning a home. And if you can borrow money at 2.8%, 10, 15 grand is over 30 years at a fixed rate. That's a gift from the lending gods. It's a no brainer. Yeah. Yep. All right, man. I appreciate you calling in. Sounds like you're, uh, you're the only guy that I know that's a lender showing buyers real estate and calling in on the radio station today at the same time. You're a, uh, you're a man of many. No, talents. I know. And I, I don't know. Yeah. It's I'm not the one showing, but they wanted me there to kind of guide them and give my thoughts. So I'm still wearing a mask. We're practicing all the safety, but it's going well. So no, I appreciate it. All right, buddy. Well, thanks again. Hey, as always, throw your phone in the drawer, spend some time outside, let those ultraviolet rays kill the COVID. Have some fun with people. Remember, we're going to get through this. Tough times don't last. Tough people do. Thanks again for tuning in. Have a great Saturday. See you next Saturday. I have a new home. Home sweet home. Thanks, Keller Williams. I love my dream home. The preceding program is sponsored in part by Keller Williams Prime Lending and Frontline Real Estate. More complete coverage, more breaking stories here. News Radio 560, KPQ1H.